So I'm going to make a twins. Uh, the first one, we'll need to talk about it. In fact, uh, the word is flat. You know, the, sort of, there was a book in the book. In fact, uh, uh, it's, 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 it's a well known. You know, uh, the issue is not the word is flat. The issue for a Chinese company is if the word is flat, uh, what are the opportunity for us? That should be the core issue. And uh, in order to address that issue, we need to notice that uh, many of the multinationals are going through the transformation, transformation themselves, as termed by Sam, the, the global head of IBM. They would like to become globally integrated enterprises, leverage resources globally to compete globally. So that's a major change, too. And the uh, mainstream sectors and non resources will be by God. So the, the situation for the Chinese company does not look very good. No. And uh, in order to compete globally, I think there's uh, three things uh, worth noting. Number one, we need to have a global perspective, not a China perspective. That is a problem for many Chinese companies. You know, we focus too much on China, not on the global competition collaboration. And secondly, we need a new capabilities. Not to leverage the resource in China. We need to learn that resource globally. Whether it's from the viewpoint of the state or from the viewpoint of enterprises. So this new capabilities uh, need to be developed. And, uh, and also we need a new type of organizations. More like Royal Madrid. Not necessarily Chinese soccer team. Okay? Uh -huh. So that's, some, that's the sea change in mindset in organizational forms. Well, we have reason to be optimistic about the future of China, China uh, corporations. You know, uh, one, uh, one of the reasons we, need, we can be uh, optimistic about the future is a uh, uh, large proportion of the Chinese population are very willing to work so hard for money. And that's a virtue. And that's a driving force uh, <laughs> of China's economic success. In fact, in 1999, <clears throat> I was giving a talk to an NCR faculty at MBA students. Uh, some of the raised their hands and said, hey, is the statistics right? Many of us really cooked up in China. I said, look, I'm not a macro guy. Uh, but if you look back three years, eight years, I'm the most optimistic guy about the future of China. But each and every time, I underestimate the strength of this economic growth. You know, despite the fact I'm, I'm, I'm not the most optimistic guy about the future of China. The reason is, many analysis or framework we use do not capture some of the factors of this data over here, like people willing to work so hard for money. I mean, that's very important, very, very important. As long as you give the oxygen to the Chinese people, uh, they will do well. So it doesn't help them keep something really great, you know, give back oxygen to the people. So they survive. They come around the globe and will try everything possible to make money. So actually, it's very lucky, very easy to be leader of China in that regard. You don't need to motivate people yourself. They motivate themselves you know, by traveling around the globe. Okay. So that's the key reason why uh, I'm a positive about the future of China's economy and growth, all of that. And of course, uh, I was having a lunch with uh, the French ambassador to China. He raised a very, very good point. He said, hey, if you're Chinese working so hard for money, how do you come up with the time for creativity? Very good point. Very good point. I really like that remark. Okay, really hit me. Okay. And uh, all other factors, I don't need to go over in detail. But one thing I want you to pay attention to is this uh, new opportunities for the next one, the ten years or so, uh, for the future ten years of great opportunity coming up. Uh, one is this uh, capital goods head industries. You know, because uh, structure change in China, I think the time has come for this particular sector. And also globally, Chinese companies can be competitive. And uh, also, uh, SOEs very dominating in those sectors. Whatever sector SOE really dominating, a lot of inefficiency, a lot of opportunities. You know. And uh, if you see the private sector, uh, many of them started with Delon, the largest private company, which failed a, a few years ago. Delon, D E R O N G. Delon was the first. Uh, well, at least among the first private enterprises to move away from light industry to heavy industry. I mean, actually, this company has a lot of foresight. They see the situation better than many of the private enterprises in China, and they have a global view. But they fail. But you see, many other private companies try to venture into this capital goods heavy industry, including Fu Xing, Bo Guangchang, Liu Liu Yunhao, Liu Yunxing. All of these uh, uh, leading private companies venture into the heavy industry sector. Of course, they have a problem. For this sector, government regulation is very heavy. 
secondary capital requirements uh, are, are significant. So you might run the risk of like East Asia in, in, uh, financial crisis situation. You have a short-term credit for long-term investment, you know? Uh, but this sector is very attractive, not only to foreign, but also to the private firm in China. <coughs> Service sector. The identical opportunity. I'll come back to this when I talk about second generation of Chinese companies and Chinese entrepreneurs. The service sector in China uh, uh, last year about 40.7% uh, of GDP of China as compared to over 80% for the US. OECD country is about 57-58%. So gigantic potential. If you look at the uh, experience of telecom in the past few years, was one China telecom. Right now you have four major ones. Ex explosive growth. You look at financial services, you look at telecom, like at healthcare. Healthcare for the US, about 18% GDP. In China, 5 point some percent of GDP. Huge opportunity coming up. I, I think a 10 billionaire will be made shortly, five years' time, among rich people in China. Not only making a lot of wealth for society, but also will generate a lot of wealthy people in the, in the, in the, in the, in the process. Uh, well, I see some of you now school already, now school alumni. And in the next two years or so, IPO will generate what wealth is people in China. And uh, uh, media, education, like the Fox Media, the chairman, CEO, you know, what's that? and uh, with a market capitalization of about six billion US dollars already as of today. You know. And uh, education, sports, gambling, mainly the service sector, hotel, you know, home in, as set it up by Neil Shen, you know, so there's, there's lots of opportunity in the sector. <coughs> Cultural revolution. Cultural revolution, we have a lot of bad things coming out of cultural revolution. But one good thing about cultural revolution is, for the people of my generation, we can look forward without much constraint. In most of those terminology, a black piece of paper, you can draw the most beautiful picture. We can learn from the West. We can learn from our ancestors without much constraint. So if you look in the future, we can be positive thinking. This might be a good thing. Well, I'm not saying cultural revolution is good. You know, but for future, future, thank you, okay? We have diversity of cities, uh, like Hong Kong, uh, can be really a bridge for Chinese companies to leverage resources globally. I think the second spring of Hong Kong will come shortly, and uh, the role of Hong Kong will be reversed, no longer serving as springboard for the foreign multinational company to enter into China. If you look at the global situation, the second spring of Hong Kong will come in a major way. And uh, you have, we have Shanghai right now, it's very livable for many foreigners, you know, for, for, for you folks in the consumer goods business, they like living uh, in Shanghai. But at the same time, we have uh, Beijing and Xi'an. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, uh, Beijing and Xi'an have been much destroyed uh, because of our focus on economics. Just uh, chatting with Stephen and a couple of friends, uh, I was in Italy, uh, like in, in particular for Florence and Siena. And really striking to me, I think like Xi'an could be Florence, Siena of China, that's all damaged. Beijing could be the Paris of China. 